It's not just the pace of which we put this together with all the partners contributing, but we were putting something together where we didn't act, it was quite a lot of unknowns. I think we turned this around within 10 days. But we'd never actually, you know, exchanged information necessarily directly before. So did we have safe and secure emails? Um, did we have an ability to appropriately share information? Could we come together? Um, community connectors will pick that up and respond to that. Actually, so, um, yeah. so they've got no one they can turn to, they've got no friends or family, you know, they're isolated, um, they might be feeling lonely. Um, so it's just keeping those people connected yeah. and making sure that's that they feel right, supported. Right. We've made so many links with so many other organisations out there that we, we probably should have known from a long time ago, but you don't really, you know, you really get good relationships with people when you work so closely. I work for the CCG, we've got Virgin Care colleagues and then we've got our sort of third sector organisations as well. And it, coming in here you really don't see the boundaries that you have seen in normal day operation. All right, so if I can take your name then, please. There's been some really sad and and desperate um, cries for help, um, and yeah, I'm proud that b between our t you know, myself and our team, my team, um, we've been able to help those people, and that's quite phenomenal. And um, yeah, something that I would always be proud of. This is Justin at the end of week one. The number when we hit the thousand, that going out, that update when yeah. the thousand went back. We all flexed our operations in order to take advantage of this huge opportunity to provide a far better service um, for, for a community in very great need. Exhausted, but really elated. And what it proved to me is something that we've been aiming for for many years, which is that no wrong door approach. And I think that's been the beauty of the hub, the simplicity of it. But I think that, you know, rather than having to navigate multiple referral routes, which is really confusing, um, and particularly people on low income who may be on a pay as you go phone, etc., etc., that's another barrier. Having one number that people can pick up the phone and say, I need some help. And to deliver results, making it about service delivery, very much about having people knocking on doors where possible, delivering food, delivering medicines, and then offering backup support in terms of housing, in terms of well-being and, and, and uh, mental health advice, and in terms of uh, money advice and employment advice. And I think that collaboration of all the relevant services coming together, supported by Virgin Karen Baines Council, has enabled us to work really holistically with one person and find a, a solution to their, to their needs. What we've achieved in a month, we were looking to achieve in a couple of years. So, to, you know, my target was maybe 100 volunteers this year, which, you know, obviously we've got two and a half thousand now. So we've got this legacy and network of people that want to help each other. Today with 3SG, we are doing all the flyer collections. So we're going to be flyering 80,000 households across Bath and North East Somerset over the next couple of days. And we've got volunteers turning up to help throughout the day. Um, there's about 360 volunteers helping, which is really impressive. Hello, I'm Mark. I'm currently working at home as a community connector. I've just come off a call with one of the uh, ladies that calls me most days at the moment. Her name's Elaine, and uh, she's a bit lonely, and uh, we connected her originally with a street champion who's helping her with her shopping. Um, but she rings through every day or two and uh, just lets me know how she is. Um, presently, uh, you know, we're connecting a lot of people who need help with their shopping and with their prescriptions and with emergency food parcels and befriending. Um, as you can see, we're working from our front rooms and uh, doing our best and uh, it seems to be helping an awful lot of people. I also volunteered to be a uh, community volunteer and that's involved me shopping for Nanny Annie once a week on a Friday and I absolutely love shopping for Nanny Annie. She's 92 years old and her son is shielding and she is shielding so she can't leave the house to get her shopping herself. She's had butch farm foods being delivered but obviously she needs bread and milk and other necessities and necessities for Nanny Annie include a dairy milk chocolates, a mini bottles of Prosecco and a 
cappuccino coffees and it's a pleasure for me to get it for her. She's 92 and there's no reason why she should have to go without her Cadbury's dairy milk at this time. She comes to the door every Friday and she looks amazing. She's got her hair done, she's got her beads on in a beautiful outfit. And even though she's seen nobody for a week, she looks incredible. And it, it gives me joy in my heart to be able to deliver to her every week. So I've made it down to the pavilion. So here are all the food boxes prepared, ready for me to take some away. So as you can see, loaded up, there are six family boxes and six single boxes. Comes down the side. So I'll take those back to peas down now. We assess, first of all, do they have a genuine need? Um, can they afford to buy food? If they can afford to buy food, then we would um, signpost and support them to access food that's been provided by um, local food producers and retailers um, across Baines. Um, and then the other route is that the people who don't have money at that stage, then we're going to obviously supply them with a food parcel, um, but then we need to move them on so that they don't keep coming back. Just delivered a parcel to John, John's self-employed plumber lives up at Fox Hill. He's got the virus. He's had it for about two weeks, although he looks a lot better today. This is the second parcel I've delivered for him. Otherwise, he just literally wouldn't get, wouldn't be able to get out of the house. He's got no friends. You can't ask the neighbours who are elderly because obviously, because he's got the virus, he's put his isolation posters up. Nobody wants to go anywhere near him. Still, got to go back now, back to Peastown uh, and find out who else needs. I think there's some deliveries today for uh, out in North East Somerset. Anyway, all go, bye. Uh, they really helped us with some frozen meals. It's been essential for a lot of local families. So what kind of numbers are you looking after then, uh, Jimmy, Dan? So we, top, we topped about 90 a week, 90 food packages. Uh, overall, we've done about just under 700 food packages over this period of time and obviously it will continue for a while longer. We've got, I know we've got one today, we've actually got six kids and two adults. So the numbers of uh, individuals actually is really high. People are hungry, we have people turning up here who really have no food in their larder at all. So people would be going hungry without this and the other projects all over Baines to support them. I've just delivered a parcel to a lady who I spoke to last night um, I wish I'd spoken to her earlier in the day and we could have got her a parcel last night rather than this morning. Um, so I feel really guilty about that. Um, she'd just come out of hospital and uh, she thought that um, she was going to be left to die and no one cared about her. Um, so it was quite tough and we're doing our best but, you know, sometimes that's not enough really. Um, AGK... Uh, going to ring amazing um people are going to come and help us support her longer term so hopefully she'll get the support she needs but um yeah very sad but for me it's about helping people through what is a very trying troubling worrying anxious state which we've been through it is an all um, as, as a nation isn't it and globally but giving people that sense of there is somewhere to go where no matter how big or how small if you have a question or you're anxious about something there are a team of expert people that are here to help and guide and support you and the quality of conversations that i've been involved in with the organizations here that take place around how can we wrap care around this individual quickly and most appropriately um, has been really spectacular for, for those organisations involved. We all know that often people will come to us with one um, acute need, but below that there are multiple complex issues and needs that have contributed to, 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 to this kind of headline. The setup has really worked well for us because although at the moment our primary concern is people's well-being and calling people that have become very, very lonely and isolated, 
bigger issues are arising. People are in this pressure cooker um, and little problems are bubbling up and they need to be sorted. And for some people who haven't dealt with their issues before lockdown, it has to be dealt with now. And this lady was in food poverty, fuel poverty. She couldn't afford to pay her electric or top up her electric key. Um, she had a lot of health issues, diabetes. They put her in touch with the Citizens Advice Bureau for help with her benefits um, to make sure that she was getting enough money each week. Um, and also EDF Energy they put her in touch with who gave her another key to top up her electric. Um, so the following week I gave her a call and she was much, much happier um, knowing that there are all these people to help her. Clients of mine lost their son very suddenly to COVID. Um, he lived in a care home. So they hadn't seen him for a while, so obviously they were very distressed. Um, and they rang for some advice about whether or not they should attend the funeral because they weren't sure what to do. They were scared um, of making the, the wrong decision. So, um, so I rang the hub and um, had a chat with them and they were really helpful. And they arranged for a public house to ring this couple. They'd rung the couple straight away um, and explained the situation to them, gave them um, some good sound advice. And so one call to the hub we get that support very, very quickly. And it's been a very, very efficient and heartwarming experience. And then I spoke to colleagues yesterday about shielding letters. The 2,500 letters have gone out, which is really good news like on behalf of the CCH. Sometimes things that are felt in the too difficult box around um, compliance and governance and business cases, we've been able to almost uh, shed our skin of all of that and actually be able to get on and deliver what everybody wanted to deliver um, for, for a long time really, which is this joint, amazing joined up service. So for me, I think that's been hugely beneficial um, to Baines, but also to the organisations that, that make up the Compassionate Community Hub. We've got this legacy and network of people that want to help each other and we can enhance that and we can support them with training and we can work with people like the village agents and DHI, social prescribing. We can make sure that that is all integrated with this amazing army of volunteers. So the legacy could be, you know, a genuinely um, more connected, compassionate Baines in, in, in not even in the, the longer term, in within the year. So it's fantastic. This has been the most successful piece of collaboration that we've done. Um, bringing everybody together has been really, really successful. And we need to hang on to the positives and to all the good things that we've achieved here and that what we can offer residents of Baines is a whole range of services under one roof. We've been able to genuinely put those services around the person at multiple, at multiple levels of need and I think it would be, I don't think we can go back. It's really about um, teams coming alive, you know, getting rid of that um, hierarchy and being able to work quickly to make changes has has brought people to understand that they can change the way they deliver services and work together across organisational boundaries. And I'm, you know, I'm immensely proud of every single member of um, of staff who work here. They feel very, very proud of their achievements. They've realised that they can now reflect as practitioners and look at different ways of doing things. They've met new people. They think differently about how they approach their role. And I don't think that's to be underestimated, the power of that for professional staff and organisations as a success out of something that's actually been quite tricky.